Hey, this is Pastor Dan Roth and Pastor Jessica Roth hey. for the Rock Life Podcast. Welcome to everybody listening and watching, and uh, we're excited to have you guys with us. Like, subscribe, share. Uh, additionally, we said this last time, but it's worth saying again, we are now officially on The Rock, uh, not The Rock, but um, on podcast apps uh, for, I believe, for the, the uh, iTunes um, we're working on the Google Play and the other avenues, but at least we're there. And I know they were talking about Spotify as well. So we'll we'll let you guys know when those things happen. But nice, at the very nice. least, uh, yeah, we are good. on one and growing. So it's good stuff. So make sure to spread the word. But I'm here with my beautiful wife, Pastor Jessica Roth. Yay. It's good to have you with us. Hi. I get to join you. You get to join us, yeah. And and uh, what's funny is we were we were having you for a different podcast you thought it was for this one and so you took notes and were like prepared i i did well you were preaching so good this weekend that i was like ooh, ooh, that'd be good on a podcast mm. and then i was like i think i'm on it i think i got a meeting notice yeah <laughs> but it was for a different one for a different one yeah for so the... i invited myself into this one we kicked pastor we antonio kicked out antonio <laughs> But he that's has a, a lot of work to do for Rock. He has a lot of work to do right now, and you are way prettier than he is. So, oh, uh, thank you. Yeah, that's yeah. good news. Hey, so um, usually we we talk about something random, and I don't know if you knew this, but this morning, uh, I was taking our son to uh, to school because I knew I was going to come in and record today. But um, I I walked downstairs. Did you smell it downstairs? No. Oh my gosh! I walked downstairs, and it's like cinnamon. It, it, oh yeah, I bought those French toast sticks. Yeah. Did you have any? Okay, so I'm walking downstairs. I'm smelling this heavenly aroma. And as I'm walking around, I'm like, where is the smell? Like, I, I there was no French toast made. There was nothing. But There then, was like a big bag that Mike had made. Okay, so I remembered that you bought that bag because I had yeah. asked you about it, right? And uh, But I didn't see any. There was no plate. There was. It, it was, was just... in the air fryer. It was in the air fryer. Did they forget them? They left for school? So... Titus ate something else, I think. Yes. Or maybe he had some he of did. that. But yeah. So then Micah made a whole thing of it. Like a whole bag. Not the whole bag, but like most of the bag. Oh, <laughs> and <laughs> left it in the air fryer. I thought he was coming back for it. Because he, he, he was in the shower. Oh. And so I thought he was coming back for it after the shower. So I just went in and snuck three of them because I'm like, there's no way he's eating this many French toast sticks. Although he is a big boy. Big boy. So, um, but I grabbed three of the sticks because I'm like, this smells so good that I have to have some You're right now. You're a sucker for cinnamon rolls. I, you had one from Porto's this week, dude, too. Dude, Porto's cinnamon rolls. Do you realize rolls. Like you're obsessed with cinnamon rolls? Something about it. Well, no, that's French toast, though. Well, I guess you skinny like you are. It's not like a them. cinnamon roll if it's French toast. Well, I guess. But yeah, it's, it's different. But cinnamon is still in totally, French toast. Well, cinnamon's good. Cinnamon's good in all... I put cinnamon in my lattes. Yeah, me too. There you go. So, anyways... I eat my three. I put the rest back in the air fryer just to keep it warm, you know. And the next thing I know, our son is running out the door. And I'm like, hey, are you going to eat your breakfast? He's like, no, I don't have time. Every time. <laughs> I find food in that air fryer <laughs> at the end of every day. I mean, we found a whole every day, bag. End of every day. A whole bag of chicken strips. Yes. I, like, I, these boys drive me insane. Not a half bag. And it's the days I'm working because when I'm home, <laughs> I can manage this. You can, yeah, like, hey, who who yeah. cooked the, the chicken strips? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But this was like, you know, most of a bag of cinnamon French toast sticks that just got so left. did you eat them all? So, no, I did not eat them all. There's no way <laughs> any one person should eat that many. But it was empty. It was, it was by the way, at the back door, like, Almost falling off the counter when I left. And I was like, who did this? And so, what is this? So what happened was <laughs> I I went and got the French toast sticks and put them in a bag. Put those in the fridge so that they wouldn't go bad. Oh, thank you. And then in my rush to get Titus so out the door. you left the mess. I left the mess. That's all right, honey. I forgive you. I'll clean it up when I get home. <laughs> so anyways, this is the things that we talk about. <laughs> So, well, busy life. Yeah, you know, very busy life. Children going in fifty million directions. In the midst of all that, we're studying for sermons, and and this uh, this past weekend was part three yeah. of a series, which you know a lot of good feedback on the series. A lot of people saying you know just how much it impacts them. I had a beautiful text. Someone was listening online actually, and was just like getting teary eyed because they were just like feeling the the power of God as well. Um, just the message itself is deeply impacting. Well, I feel like the while I was sitting through the messages, the pleasure of God was on it. 
Right. Like, it, who yeah. can talk about the wrath of God? And yet you feel the pleasure of God in talking about his wrath. But I think I think that's the, the whole emphasis is that when we when we look at the book of Romans and the Apostle Paul talks about the righteousness of God is revealed in the gospel, the wrath of God has to be revealed and, and the character of God doesn't change. God is still love even in his wrath. Absolutely. Right. And that's been kind of the thing that that what God loves will determine what he hates yeah. and will determine what he gets angry about. Mm-hmm. And uh, and so we've seen those things. And this week was the culmination of that. I mean, the end of Romans one, we could have spent more time there, but I'm like, do we want to? Oh, my goodness. And uh, what was it? Twenty one sins. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, this is a list. <laughs> yeah. It depends on how you count. But and you're like. Yeah. Everybody sitting in the audience like, ooh, ooh. Well, I think I think many people could excuse themselves from a lot of the, the ones they would call the big ones. You know, murder. I've never murdered anybody. I've never committed adultery. I'm not, you know. But sin is sin. It, it is. And that's where things like covetousness are, are full of envy, yeah. inventors of evil. I mean, there's disobedient to parents, mm-hmm. proud, boasters. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's some, some real things that we deal with. That, that are in that list that people would excuse themselves from responsibility and saying like, you know, yeah. I'm not that way. I'm not, I'm not that bad. Well, I had people like at the back door, can you define gossip? Can you define, <laughs> <laughs> can you define covetousness? Because I mean, really, they're really like checking themselves. Yeah. Like, gosh. Ooh, maybe I have participated in these things and I don't think I am. Well, in the flesh, you know, there's, there's nothing good when it comes to that. The flesh wars against the spirit. And we see that in Galatians 5, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, we see that yep. um, all through the Bible, 1 Corinthians 2 and 3. We can see that in Romans 6, 7, and 8. You know, um, and, and these are things that we're going to discuss at length when we get there. But um, neat aside, we, we calculated how long it would take to get through Romans because we just finished Romans 1, right? So it'll take us roughly, if we stay at this pace, four years. Probably more than that, just because I'm not going to be taking big chunks like we are, but but could potentially, you know. But um, that's just an I interesting love thought. That because like it's like eating and chewing on the word. Yes. Like, and that's what is going to teach, edify, equip us, build us, strengthen us as believers. Because we can read through something really quickly and easily forget it. Right. But when we sit in some scripture and we actually meditate on what is God really saying in this. Mm-hmm. It is going to build us up and strengthen us and equip us to be so strong that when these things come at us, we'll, we'll so recognize it and we won't easily pass by it because it wasn't just a quick read. But right. it, it, it's yeah. going to be something I chew on. Yeah. Yeah. And you get you get the most out of it. I think that's the, the, the same way, too, when you preach through a book. Mm-hmm. You have to hit these verses, even though they're unpleasant. I mean, I tell you, w- reading through that, to hear that God turned people over to their debased ways that's heartbreaking i i mean it just but it's so true you see it nowadays we, we do see it yeah and in many times christians especially have lamented like how could someone do that how could you know and and even where's god in all this yes a- and Big yet questions. god is saying hey if you fight me long enough i'll give you what you want well i think about like parenting yeah right like if you kids aren't stupid like no, <laughs> no they're not i used to know like Okay, my mom can't put a long period of, like, grounding me because she will be annoyed with her sentencing after about a week. (laughs) And so I'm going to get off of it in about a week, right? Like, Oh, man. You can wear your parents down. Play the system. Yeah, you play the system, but you can't do that with God. No. And so I think that we treat God like we do really relationships. Sure. And yet he's sovereign. He's holy. He's just. And if he's just even in punishment, that's a hard one for people to understand because we're looking at God as our relationships that we're in now. Like, oh, I, my mom gave in because she loves me. No, she didn't love you. You were a sucker and you pushed her and she didn't feel like fighting, you know? And so God is not a sucker. No, he's not. (laughs) I think people also, though, have a tainted view of love. Absolutely. You know, and and that's where when they say that God is love, they they're saying God is my tainted view. Well, according to how I perceive love. A- exactly. Yeah. And and that's where they end up making God in their own image mm-hmm. rather than seeing the image of the invisible God. Well, if God is love, then I have to look to God to see what love is. Yes. I can't look to what I think is love or yeah. how I think I should be loved or what my perception how you of feel. what it should be. 
Yeah. So then I'm really saying I'm more important. My my understanding of God and his wrath and his love in my mind and in the way I break it down is more important than the way God actually defines it for me in the word. Right. And so when we're, you are preaching this word, yeah, it is a hard word to hear. Well, even his anger is an expression of, of love, love because God is love. Absolutely. Therefore, he's angry over what he loves. Well, we punish our children. Well, we should be. Uh, the rule discipline, yes. discipline our children as much as and we punishments, should anymore. Yeah. But I mean, I remember that tough love. Like my dad would not give in. And yeah. I had to like pay people back and I had to do things I didn't want to do. Go apologize. Go apologize so many times for things that I'm like, I didn't do that. And it's like, yeah. it doesn't matter. Be the bigger person, you know, like go apologize. And there were these things, there were these principles of like, you don't need to always be right. You yeah. don't always have to have, it doesn't always have to benefit you to better someone else, you know? And so I think love does that though. Love is the, is the betterment of someone else's self-sacrifice for the betterment of someone else. Right. And a parent hates punishing their children. I used to, you know, my dad, when he would spank me or my mom, what would they say? It's going to hurt me more more than it hurts you. Yeah. And I'd be like, oh yeah, right. (laughs) You're not on the receiving end. (laughs) Yes. And, but it's true because now I've had my own children. Oh, I hated spanking my kids. It's like a dread. Like you just I like, hated taking things away from them. I hated not letting them go to certain it's functions. It's yeah. terrible because yeah. you want to give it to them, but you realize that that's not It's going to hurt them in the good long for run. Them. But, you know, there have been things that our kids have fought us on that we've had to say, well, fine, go and learn that lesson. Yeah. And I, and I think that's where Absolutely. in the message this weekend we saw that that aspect of God that, listen, if, if you're going to continue down this road, yeah. you know, uh, I, the, the scripture keeps coming back to me. Ephraim is playing with his idols. Leave him alone. Yep. In other words, leave him alone to suffer the conf- consequences because he's going to learn what's right and what's wrong through that unpleasant experience. Well, we've said it about relationships at times. This is the relationship they want to have. Yes. People create the world they want to live in. Yeah. And you can have as much or as little of God as you want. The sad thing is, is that most people, and, and I could prove this to you biblically too. I mean, just look at the four types of soil. Yep. Most people don't want a lot of God. No. And they like don't even read their Bible for themselves. The extent of their Bible reading is like. In church. Um, no, they ask. Verse of the or day. like the person talking to them out loud on that little like the video of the day yeah yeah so sad like we need to be christians that dive in and like make time like yeah and and put in some effort in this relationship with god because the relationship we want with god is a relationship we will have with him yeah i mean that's that's the thing is is that you can have as much or as little of god as you want and god is pleased you know, we said it this way in the message, how you treat God is how he'll treat you. I mean, God is so pleased when his kids want to spend time with him. Yeah. I mean, we know that personally. When totally. our kids want to, hey, I didn't I didn't go to the, my friend's house. Why? I just haven't been with you guys in a while. Mm-hmm. Just wanted to be with you. And it's like, oh, you know, your yeah. heart just no, bursts. Yeah, the changes. We're like, oh, well, what do you want to do? Like, let's go. <laughs> yeah. You want to go to the beach? You want to go to the mountains? What do you want to do? Let's go get ice cream. Let's do it all. <laughs> yeah. No, I tell you, it, it, it does. It does it delights the heart of a parent when their kids say, no, I just, I just wanted to be with you guys, you know, or, um, they're finished with their homework and they come curl up on the couch, Mm -hmm. you know? So yeah, it it makes a difference. Well, you had said something and, um, I wrote it down actually. Let me, let me remember exactly how you had said it. It was, um, sorry, I have to do my face ID. Okay. Um, you said, don't cancel God. You can't just cancel him in our lives as we do a subscription. Ooh. And you were talking about like, nail appointment which i thought was funny because i've had to cancel my nail appointment a few times i had to work that in for the ladies i said the handyman or the nail lady yeah yeah like you could just call them up and be like hey i can't do this today whatever yeah but you can't do that with god you can't put him on hold well yeah i mean that's the thing is is that uh we talked about canceled appointments god gets angry when we're not with him why because of hate he doesn't hate us no he loves us so much that he gets angry that he doesn't have that time with us Mm -hmm. that that you know, if you treat God like he's common, what, you know, Pastor Jim used to say this, what you treat as common will become common, right? Yeah. And if you want a common relationship with God, just keep treating God as common. It'll be common for you. Right. But if you treat God as special and as unique, and, and if, you, if you put concerted time and effort into your relationship with God, then you're going to have an uncommon relationship. That's why, you know, when people look at us, we're radical. 
Yeah, I guess so. I just thought we were normal Christians. Well, I, I think in our minds we should be. that we're radical. We should be the norm. Yes. But but really, I mean, you know, it, it's unique to see people that, that really want to go after God like this. And, that, and that's why we preach. That's why we're so intense. That's why we have so many church services. That's why, you know, our church is the way it is, is because we're trying to get that heart into people. But outside of church for us, just living a life holy. Yeah. You know, is it just a normal thing? Like living our lives according to what God says is not weird. Like, yeah, it, it's like how we manage our finances. It's how we manage our children. It's how our children live their lives. Mm-hmm. It's, um, you know, who gets to be in our inner circle. Like, yeah, who there, gets there's close just, to us. these are things I've had to learn over all these years is that that we're uniquely radical Christians, but I do wish that the body of Christ would be all uniquely radical Christians. Could could you imagine the way the world yeah. would be? Like we are peripheral to the world. The world is peripheral to us is what the word of God says, but we don't live that way. Yeah, and, and I think that's where people who've had problems in church, they wonder why you know, they have hurts and things that happen in church or why people would treat them that way. Even Even pastors and leaders, and, and, it, and I think this is where the difference is, is because to them, God is a part of their life, but he's not their life. Uh, yeah, 100%. You know what I mean? And, and it's like, yeah. you know, uh, and, and that's, that's very sad. It's now, sad. that's not all, but you're going to find people in every church, even in our church, that, that it's just a Sunday thing or it's a, you know, a religious experience. It's, uh, it's a part of their life. Uh, but they're, they're there to check a box or they're there to just, you know, uh, but they're not there to grow. They're not there because of the passion, the intensity, mm-hmm. like, you know, and, and that's why we try and stir people up. Like, hey, listen, God gets angry when we treat him as common. Well, and all of the sins that you listed, right? Like, yeah, God didn't list them to, like, be the big bad guy in heaven to be like, you know. It's not a list of do's and don'ts. No. But those are expressions of a life that is. Opposing to God. Y- yeah. Well, that that's rejected God in that, yes, that sense. You've made a him. You've made an image that you've worshiped and now God gives you over and says, fine, if that's what you want, you can have it, Yeah, you know? And, and that's a very scary place to be in right. when you think about it. If God is, has given you over to those things, because when God gave Israel over to those things, yep. it wasn't long before Assyria was coming in, before Babylon was coming in, you know, uh, before the, the wall of the temple was being knocked mm-hmm. down, the treasures being taken away, you know, Ezekiel sees the glory of the Lord departing. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, and, you know, those are scary things to be without God, to be so absent from God's presence. Yeah. Yeah. You know, see, let, let's just go over some of the things you talked about. Like, yeah. What's, what's in your notes? Is, this is, you know, this series has been so good, but I, I do think the wrath of God, you know, it's like, oh, you were talking about idolatry leads to immorality. Yes. And I do think that like, what is modern day idolatry look like? You know, I thought that would yeah. be a really good thing for us to talk about because I don't know if we understand this as much as like maybe we think about like you were saying, like, you know, um, Buddha or, you know, like these these images that people have in yeah. nail shops or even people use them for decor in their homes and stuff now. Even images that are carved of of people that we would say are saints, you know, mm-hmm. uh, men and women that that yep. followed Jesus when people start to carve images of them pray to them before God. Yeah. I yeah. mean, uh, pastor Paulo Gondo talks about how there's a, a patron saint of, uh, like thievery or something like that. And it's like, what? they pray to him before they go and rob someone or so. I, I, I don't know. I'm probably getting this totally wrong. I hope you are, but if you're not, well, no, no, I, I mean, it it's, le- me. it's, it's real. It's like the, the, the patron saint of thieves or something like that, you know, or uh, something. So yeah, I was shocked when he was talking about it. Because it was just kind of crazy to think that someone could take something so pure when it comes to worshiping our Lord Jesus and then turn it into something that is obviously sin. Yeah. You know, and, and that's where, again, if we're going to worship the image rather than the, the, the invisible creator, mm-hmm. God will, will give you over to your desires. And that, that idolatry will lead to immorality, right? So, yes. so in that case, the, the idolatry of that I can worship and ask for protection in a drug deal or in a you know in a wrong expression that's immorality right yes obviously you know yes. I, I think people would say well i 
I'm not worshiping any idols, and I'm not going and, and having sex with the temple prostitutes. However, okay, if you may, let's say somebody starts to prosper, they're tithers, they're in church, they, they've always wanted to have, and, and this is not against any boat owners, but they always wanted to have a boat, right? Okay. Nothing wrong with being a boat owner. Go have fun at the, the lake. The saddest part is that we've seen this. But uh, literally we've seen it, yeah. Yeah, it's sad. And, and not just one. No. It, it's been multiple people. but. Tons. Because they own the boat or because they bought the the house at the river or because they, you know, bought the house up in the mountains or something like that, then they feel obliged to use it. Yes. I'm spending all this money on this. I'd better use it. So it goes from being just a Saturday or just a long weekend thing to every weekend because they're going, I got to get my money's worth out of it. And so I'll just live stream. I'll just watch the message later, you know, and that works for a time. But they don't realize that they're being desensitized to the presence of God. Yeah. The corporate anointing. Yeah, there's an anointing there. The fellowship of the saints. Mm -hmm. uh, the involvement. I mean, you cannot serve through online experiences. No. You're, you're only receiving. You're never giving out. You're never greeting at the back door. You're never serving in the kids' ministry. You're never, you know, waving people in the parking lot. But like even like developing within you how to be around people that are going to sharpen you. Exactly. Or actually bug you and you still have to walk in love with That's them. That's part of life together, right? I, I mean, you, you're not together on a video that you're watching later. No. It, it's supplemental to the actual life of the body mm -hmm. and sitting under that prophetic word that God is giving through the message that weekend and, and having that tangible presence of God. God's presence is, is everywhere. Sure. There's yeah. a special presence at the house of God. There really is. You're not going to get it anywhere else. Yeah. That's right. Here, here's People Jacob. Get healed when they come into the Jacob house took God. a trip, right? Yeah. He had a dream at Bethel, woke up and said, whoa, the Lord is in this place and I didn't know it. And God spoke destiny and purpose over his life in that place. Not anywhere right. else. And he called it Beth El, the house of God. Because people make time to be in the house of God. Yeah. And to be close to God and to learn from God and to get more of God. Yeah. He meets them there. Well, the effort, how you treat God is how God will treat you, yeah. right? So the effort just to get there. But going back down our, our, our trail of thought. So here's somebody. Now they're, now they're just watching online. Then, then they're not watching online. Yeah. Right? That happens. They like God, they know the scriptures, but they're, they're continuing to go to the river or to the lake or to whatever it is. After a while, alcohol, yep. you know, whereas they were just having one at night with dinner. Now it's all the time. Yeah, there's no boundaries. It, on it's, it's no longer, yeah. oh, I, I drink, but I don't get drunk, you know, which a, a lot of people excuse their behaviors with. But, but now all of a sudden they're getting drunk, uh, you know, and then at and the river. to be drunk is sin. Y absolutely. Yep. Okay, so we we're talking That's about idolatry says. leads to immorality. Yeah. Here it goes. Now they're at Havasu, spring break, and all the implications that go along with that. Yeah. Young, uh, you know, college students, hey, come over here and do this with us. You know, and all of a sudden they're into things that they were into back that they got delivered from yeah. back in the day. When you God know? has to deliver us from things, and then we go back to it and we justify it. I say, well, God lets me. But the idolatry led to immorality. Yeah. You know, we, we could go down that path with trying to make money and money becomes an idol. Absolutely. We could go down that path with yeah. somebody who desires to have a godly spouse. But then, you know, that person becomes an idol. It, it will our lead children become our idols. children become an idol. Now, all of a sudden, sports and their games and well, they yeah. have to go to college. And so this is the only way we're going to be able to afford college is if they're good at sports. Uh, and, and they've lost their, their faith in God to provide for them. Well, yeah, because w how is God going to make a way? Yeah. You know, if that's not where God wants that to be. You know, I was reading in Second Timothy this morning and it was talking about um, the word of God and how important it is. And, mm -hmm. it, and it's Second Timothy um, three. And it says, for a time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Sub Second Timothy four, three. Well, they will not um, endure sound doctrine. And yeah. I just thought Oof, we are there. But according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers and they will turn their ears away from the truth and they will be turned aside to fables. But you be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist and ful fulfill your ministry. And Paul is talking about preaching the word and the word of God convinces it rebukes and it exhorts and it is long suffering. Mm. And that's what the word of God is supposed to do to us. We're supposed right. to sit under the word of God 
Yeah. It's supposed to convict us. Yeah. It's supposed to rebuke us. Well, people are so feelings led that they don't want to ever feel bad, but yeah. they don't realize that that when God convicts, it's not condemning. No. It, it's actually something that is convincing us to live the way that God wants us to live and the way that's pleasing to him and that that we were not angering God with yeah. our actions, you know, and we're not getting involved in that immorality and treating God as common. Do you think idolism can, and you had mentioned this in this series, um, about us becoming our own idols. And I thought that yeah. was so powerful because there is this new thing that, and I don't know how new it is. I think it just has a label now where it's like body dysphoria. Mm -hmm. And it's where people are so um, like distorted in their minds about how they look in their appearance yeah. that they're not sound or ever happy with who they are and I and every time I've been hearing about this and I we just watched a movie with it in it and, or I think it was an advertisement or something. And I was like, oh, my goodness, there's a, like a whole movie based off of this that is going to be coming out. And I was yeah. like, that is so demonic because it is such a introspective like look at yourself. It's a very selfish. Right. Like. And you're not looking to God. You're not looking to love others. You're not looking to see how you can serve other people. You're looking at, do I have too many wrinkles? Do is my body the right shape? Is it, like we're becoming so obsessed with ourselves that we don't need idols. We have ourselves. Well, yeah, and that's that's where, you know, I, I mentioned that in the sense of I have my truth, right? And, and a lot of times people are excusing themselves from a conversation about God because mm -hmm. they're saying, well, that's your truth. That's not my truth. My mm -hmm. truth is, is that there is no God and there is no accountability. Well, I would say they're just not unbelievers then. Absolutely. Yeah. But but they're going to say my truth is, is that I can believe in your God and be okay with God but no. still sin, right? No. Which is absolutely, you can't do that. Sorry. No. You can't make the rules. Somebody needs to tell them. You can accept it, you can yeah. reject it, but you can't have both. You can't right. change it, you know. And and I think that's where in a world that changes all the boundaries, that changes everything, they're yeah. saying, no, I want to change it. Yeah. And, and I'm going to, and I'm okay with that. But they've set themselves up as God. Right. Now, what you're talking about is where it it's that image of, of yourself gets so distorted that you get obsessed over that. Mm -hmm. And I believe that the idol in that sense would be the, the image that you're striving for. Mm -hmm. And so you actually see people, I mean, they've made television shows about this where, uh, you know, they do so many surgeries, so yeah. many operations, so many different things, Botox and all uh, nips and tucks and all that other stuff that they do. And, and then, you know, if they're interviewed and asked about, do you think that your body looks good, even after all multiple surgeries, yeah. they still say no. I want a bigger chest. I want a wider hips. I want bigger lips. I want, you know, all this stuff. And, it, and it's obsession. It's obsession. With the idol of the image that they've created in their mind of what is perfection. And they're striving of for that. Perfection. Now, now that's, that's one way that that's expressed. The other way that that's expressed is that people just are, are never happy with themselves. Mm -hmm. And it's Self. never good enough. It's, it's, they're, they're totally defeated. They, they can't look in a mirror. Um, they can't look at others. They're constantly comparing. Mm -hmm. And... And that image has become the idol that, that wants to be worshipped. You know, that's the thing is that behind every idol is a demon spirit that wants to be worshipped. Yep. Demons will get people obsessed with things. Yes. And get them off of God and onto whatever image that that idol is. It could be your job. It could Absolutely, be. Absolutely, yeah. I remember um, our brother Henny, he would always say, if God can't, if the Satan can't get you to sin, He'll just keep you busy. Yeah. So busy that you'll get out of church. You'll get out of like off of the things of God. You're not reading your Bible anymore. You're not praying, not communicating with the Lord. So then whatever you're doing becomes more important than God. Right. I, I read something that made busy an acrostic where they said brought under Satan's yoke. Wow. Busy. Yikes. That's crazy, right? Yeah. It, but but even in our society, busy becomes a thing. You know, there's even conferences about if, if you know, you want to be successful in your work you got to get busy you got to hustle you've got you know there's there's an image there mm -hmm. you know and and the world capitalizes on this stuff and they make uh you know conferences and events around it and they they've got social media that that pushes you into those things you know and and they're constantly changing algorithms and things like that to focus into those areas so that you're constantly bombarded with it again it becomes obsession mm -hmm. and and that's the design of the enemy but if we fight god that I want this, I want this, I want this. Eventually, God will say, fine, you can have it then. 
Yeah, definitely. But but I don't want God to say you can have something that will ultimately harm you to me. As a pastor, I've had this conversation with many people on different topics. And I'll say, well, did you pray about it? Did you fast about this? Is, is it like, let's say I'm just going to give like a generic one. But like, let's say they're moving somewhere. Yeah. And it's like, okay, well, I see that you want to move there or whatever. Do you have a local church? First question out of my mouth every time was, yeah. where, where are you going to church? Do you have a job? <laughs> Do yeah. you have a home that you're going to bring your family to? You know, what is your plan? Mm-hmm. And, but before I even go there, before I even, do you have a local church? Have you prayed about this? Yeah. Have you fasted about this and made sure that this is a healthy move for your family? Because we are so probably radical, I guess, that we're like, we are not going to make a move unless we get God involved in it. You know? Well, you know, I think in, in some senses, I know God has called me, mm-hmm. you, our family, mm-hmm. here. Now, as yeah. our kids are growing up, they're going to have to hear from God for themselves. They're going to have to find that out. Yeah. But I'm settled. God would have to, like, slap me to, to get me out of this place and, and you know, speak to me because I, I, I know that I know that I know that I've yes. heard God's voice. This is where I'm called. I just don't know if that will ever happen. But if it does, it would have to be, like, a move and an act of God. Yeah, <laughs> where you're yeah. Like, it, We're leaving, Jess. I'd be like, no, what? It, it would be, <laughs> it, I, I know my calling. So so in that sense, but but yeah, I mean, when opportunities are presented mm-hmm. to people that aren't called or don't have that settling peace in their life to say, I know my calling, I know where I'm called to, um, I believe that God plants people in churches. And that's where, that is an important decision because sometimes people say, well, I can make more money, my family can have a better life. It'll be easier on us if we go somewhere else, whether it be another state or another city, because I have a opportunity in this area. And and absolutely, you're right. Have you prayed about that? Because opportunities will come up. But what does God want? Well, people will say to me um, after that, I've asked that a few times and they don't really give me answers. But then they'll say, well, I have a piece about it. And it's like, so did you just do you think that God just kind of like was like, fine, have what you want? Yeah, like, because I do maybe. wonder that because I didn't hear like, no, we got a direction. God is God is calling us to this place because there's a difference when God does it. When God is moving you, it is a call. When God is like planting you into maybe another church, maybe you're leaving one church to go to another church. You shouldn't just leave a church. Yeah. Like, and and not to are, demean peace. Peace can be one of those those absolutely. things that helps us in a thing. It, like if I think about it and there is no peace, yes. then I, I I just say, hey, I'm going to put it on the shelf and wait no on God. peace means don't do nothing. Yeah, don't do anything. <laughs> um, but there are times where when you're praying about something, notice it's not just peace. It's peace with prayer, right? Yep peace with the word of God that that when you think about it when you pray about it you you feel that settling peace I do think that God gives that peace to people there are times that I have known that they have not prayed about it well and they just want the pastor to get off their back yeah you know yeah absolutely <laughs> well and and I've had people that have said you know I'm going to divorce my spouse when they don't have any reason to right they just don't like their spouse absolutely. and they say well I've got a peace from God about this and yeah. it's like I'm sorry really that's unbiblical yeah yeah you know no grounds yeah yeah, no, and there's, so I think, like, all of this stuff is what separates us, is what pulls us, what, you know, we get off track with God, and, and then we get mad at God, like, he didn't come through. Sure. Later on in life, we've seen that so many times, people are just so mad at God. And it's right. like, well, what decisions did you make that God was like, okay, I'm hands off then? Yeah. Like, you're you're in your own, you're walking this out yourself. You fought me long enough. Mm-hmm. You, you want that thing that's going to harm you. I've tried. I've sent prophets your pastor talked about it in the pulpit. I've lived it. Friends have been yeah. around you. Yeah. I mean, I, I think we all have. I God be removed out of my life mm-hmm. because I have chosen to be in a relationship I shouldn't be in when I was younger, obviously. Um, and or to do things that I wasn't supposed to do, take jobs I wasn't supposed to take. Yeah. I was miserable on the job, you know. And it was like when I look back now, I go, oh, man, I did that all in my own effort. I did that all on my yeah. own. And God just let it happen because I didn't involve him in it. And I wasn't bringing him in on it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that that uh, probably some people could identify that when we've crossed lines in sin too, mm-hmm. that our consciences were seared and it yeah. got easier the next time we went, but eventually we didn't even feel the conviction of the no. Holy Spirit. That's such a scary spot. To it be is in. very scary yeah. because then where is restraint? Where is? Mm-hmm. I mean, even even in the sense of redemption, you know, we yeah. understand that God's there with arms wide open waiting for us, but at the same time, if God has said, "Fine, you can have what you want." And, and that's where I, I love the fact that God brought Israel back from captivity. Yeah. 
you know, that, that the Ezekiel had another vision of the, the glory of the Lord returning to the temple. Yeah. God is redemptive. And I think for anybody who's listening to this going, well, gosh, is there any hope? Absolutely. God totally. knows how to get us where we need to be. And, uh, you know, he, he will redeem us. Obviously, that was the rescue mission Jesus went on. And, and that's why we can preach, away. why we can, you know, repent. Mm -hmm. That's why we can return. You know, God wants us to come back. You know, uh, the, the scriptures are beautiful. Come, let us return to the Lord. Yeah. You know, th those were a people that were given over. It's like the prodigal son story. Oh, yeah. You know, came to himself. He came to himself and he yeah. realized it was better in my father's house. And I do hope and I pray that in this season where people were raised, you know, I was reading in the word as well a few days ago, and it was talking about like training up our children in the way they should go. And the reason why that's so important is that the word will not depart from them. And it was saying that in these perilous times that we're in and that we're going into, yeah. which if just look more and more, the yeah. one, like and read the Bible, it's matching, it matches. And as we're in these times, it is that word that will keep us from these broken places. Like mm -hmm. God never wanted us to have to suffer the way that the world will suffer. Right. God never wants that for his people. Now we will be persecuted, but I believe there's even grace in that. I mean, yeah. how could Paul go to the gallows, get his head cut off, you know? Yeah. It, I mean, there had to be such a grace on him. Yeah. He was happy in prison most of the time. Well, Peter, like, yes, yeah, Peter like, being, content, you know, yeah, and Peter being crucified upside down. Absolutely. You know, all of it. There had to be a grace on apostles. them in the middle of that persecution. For sure. Because God makes a way for us in those places. Yeah. There's a boldness that will come out of us as Christians. Yeah. There's a Stephen saw the Lord in the middle of, of it. Exactly. Right? Heaven was opened up and Jesus was standing. I think about Daniel in the lion's den. And yeah. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the, in the fire. I mean, he shows up for us. Yeah. And sometimes we don't show up for him. Well, that's where we have to treat God as yeah. uncommon, as holy, all those things. We're, we're wrapping this up, Pastor Jess. Any, any final thoughts or things that you just... I just loved what you said about... Had to get, um, get into there. That we must keep God in the forefront of our thinking. Yeah. And we must approve of his ways, not our ways. Yeah. You know, because being keeping God in the forefront of our thinking, I think as believers, let's do a better job at this. Yeah. Like in our everyday, like what would God think about this? Which I think that's where, you know, I know we mentioned like the, the verse of the day and the video of the day. Those are good things to it's keep. It's a good place to it's, start. It's a good starting point. Yeah. And, and if that's, if but you're. don't stop there. <laughs> if you're in a busy routine yeah. and, you know, that's all you can get, get it, you yeah. know. But, but then I would say, hey, then it's time to really look at what's important. God is more important than your busy routine. Well, some people used to go to church. Like, we have a lot of services here at our church. So people used to come, like, at least two, two, two or three, three services yeah. a week. Sometimes now they come, like, once every month or once every two weeks. Well, here's like, my thing. You can find time for the gym. Yeah, you do. You can find time for recreation. You can find time for the latest Netflix show. Mm -hmm. Right? Hours people yeah. spend on that. But then they say, I'm too busy for God. Are you? You find time for baseball for your kids or for soccer for your kids. Well, those are important things. So God's not important then. You know, I think that's where we have to get the reality check. What is most we important? We have to check ourselves. I have to check myself, and I'm a pastor. The, the big rocks go in first, right? Yeah. It, it, if you're putting stuff into a, a jar, you put the biggest things in first, and then you put smaller things in because they'll fill in the gaps, right? Yep. So, so those other things that we mentioned, they are important. Your, your physical health is important. Your kids' recreation is important. Even turning your brain off after a long day, it's important. It God, God said important. to get a rest. Yep. And yet, most important, how much time are we spending with God? How much effort are we giving to understanding the scriptures? I mean, God talks about don't forsake the assembling of brethren. Yeah, he you, talks about church the attendance. Yeah, the church and the corporate fellowship and the fellowship and the prayer. Oh, man, he just goes on and on in these things. And I know that can be daunting for people. Again, we we live in Southern California. It's it's created busy here. Oh my goodness. I We're mean just here. you can't even drive on the freeway without getting anxiety at times. Mom's in Oregon right now and she's like, It's so much slower it's here. Slow. And I'm like, wow, Other parts of this country nice. are very <laughs> slow, you know, different different places. So we have to put the priority on God, keep him in the forefront of our thinking, make that time, treat him as com un uncommon and holy, yeah. special. Yep. And I think that God will reorder he responds all the rest of our day. You know, yeah. I think it was Martin Luther. They said, he said, I'm so busy today. I, I, I need to spend the first three hours in prayer. Oh man, that's so good. You know? Yeah. Kind of crazy. Well, we got to make time for God. Absolutely. Well, 
we appreciate you guys joining us for this podcast. We're grateful yeah. uh, to spend this time with you. Again, like, subscribe, share, and uh, we would love to hear any questions. And as we head into Romans chapter number two now, uh, we're going to have a great time talking about judgments. Oh, yay. <laughs> Only God can judge me. Love you guys. We'll see you in church. Bye.